Welcome back to Module 4. In this module, we're going to talk about consequence strategies to increase behavior. So how do we think about encouraging more of the behavior that we want to see from students? We're going to talk about a variety of different strategies in this module. Again, we want to make sure we acknowledge the people that helped contribute to this content, people that were part of the classroom work group at the PBIS Technical Assistance Center, and members of the Northeast PBIS Network who all contributed to the creation of these materials. So thank you to everybody who was part of those two groups. In this module, you have the typical tools and resources that you're probably used to at this point. You'll have your videos that walk you through the content, your module workbook that has your guided notes and your activities in it and resources that you can come back to later on. And then any additional readings or resources that we provide will be available to you online as well. In this particular module, we're going to use a couple of different activities. We're going to ask you to do stop and jots. Again, this is where you pause the video, jot down some ideas or some reactions to the content that we're talking about. Discussion board posts will ask you to post online where you can interact with other people who are taking this course with you to share ideas and learn about ways other people are applying this information in their classroom. And then finally, we're going to do a couple of workbook quizzes where we ask you to kind of take a quiz along with us in your workbook as we go through here. At the end of the module, there will be your typical module quiz that is a self-assessment that will just help you understand whether you understand the basic content that was presented and help you think about where you might want to go back and spend a little bit more time. And then finally, there are some coaching activities connected to this module to help you implement these strategies successfully in your classroom. All right, uh, now that we've taken a, a couple of minutes to think about what you'd like to learn about behavior, we wanna just frame this content for you. We know that there, you are, um, there are a variety of different people who will be accessing these modules. Some of you are pre-service teachers who have yet to get your very first job. Some of you are brand new teachers in your first one, two, or five years of teaching. And some of you are really experienced teachers with lots of, lots of experience with kids with disabilities and kids in general education. And the way each group of you will access this content changes a little bit. And so if you're in a, a pre-service program and you're really learning this content for the first time and you don't yet have teaching experience, we want you to focus on learning the content and the theory. Become fluent with the ideas that we present here. Look for examples in your clinic placements and when you go into schools, look for examples of how this theory plays out. Consider video recording or asking for feedback on some of your lessons. So if you're just trying out, if you're student teaching, if you're just trying out some of these practices, once we get into specific practices in this module, consider asking your cooperating teacher or to give you some feedback on your use of those practices or, or video recording yourself and self-assessing. And we'll give you some tools to do that. But if, that's, if you're a pre-service teacher, think about it as a, as a way to look for examples, practice implementing some of the, the skills, and really become fluent in the theory. For new teachers, you have a lot on your plates. And some of this might be familiar to you. You may have had some, some of this Im information presented to you during your pre-service program, or maybe you learned some of it once you got hired. But we want you to focus on moving from what you know to actual practice. We'll talk about this as we go through, but one of the real challenges with behavioral skills is not that each individual skill is really difficult on its own to implement. It's putting the whole puzzle together in a way that that is effective in your classroom and actually improves student behavior. And so we want you to really focus on moving from your theoretical knowledge of what behavioral support looks like towards implementation. And so really think about what would be a, a, a reasonable implementation goal for yourself and either self-assess or ask a coach or, or a cooperating teacher for feedback on that goal. So you can start to see whether you're, you're able to improve your implementation of these practices as we go through. Um, and when practice isn't working, Use, when, when you try something in your classroom and it doesn't seem to be working, use your underlying understanding of this theory to modify it. So if you've got a situation where you're trying something and it doesn't seem to be effective with your students, come back to the content in these first introductory modules. Think about the theory of behavior and think about how you can modify the practice to make it a better fit for the students that you're working with and the classroom that you're working in. And for our experienced teachers, a lot of this probably will sound familiar to you. And we want you to, to we want to honor that and recognize that. And you, have you think about using this content as an opportunity for self-reflection. We all have patterns of strengths and weaknesses. And all of us can continue to improve in our behavioral support for kids, particularly with disabilities, but really for all kids. So just like the new teachers, think about your own practice. Think about where you've developed habits that you'd like to begin to change and think about how you can set a new implementation goal for yourself.
to improve your own practice. In addition, you're likely in a role of mentoring new teachers and think about how you can help support that group of teachers to learning these practices potentially faster and more effectively than you did when you first started in, in this role. So depending on where you're at in your teaching career, the way we we're suggesting you approach this content varies a little bit from just learning the theory and kind of getting an understanding all the way down to how do you help others learn it and how could you become a coach or a mentor as we go through it. But we, help, we, we hope this helps you think through how to approach the content. All right, so let's dive in. This behavioral course is part of a series of courses on database individualization for intensive academic need. And if you have not accessed those other courses, they are available through NCII. We're recommending that this behavioral course come at the beginning of that sequence or pretty close to the beginning of that sequence so that it can help you support the behavioral needs of your students as you learn to do intensive academic support for kids who might need that. You will see or you have seen this graphic in your other courses. We are gonna build a very similar graphic in the behavioral courses that we'd like to walk you through here. We're going to start with the five critical features of classroom management, and we'll talk further about what those are as we get into these modules. But those are going to be the foundational practices that should be in place in every classroom. We'll call those kind of our tier one practices that need to be in place as the foundation for everything else that we're going to do. We're going to implement those practices with fidelity. We are also going to come back and adapt those a little bit later on, but we're going to make sure we've got these, these practices implemented with fidelity. We'll progress monitor to make sure that the students are responding appropriately to that. If they are, fantastic. We'll continue to just make sure everything is going well. If they're not, we'll need to dive in a little bit deeper and think a little bit more carefully about exactly what the patterns of behavior that the students are exhibiting are telling us about our implementation of classroom practices. We then will adapt those interventions to make sure that they meet the needs of the kids in our particular group. There are a variety of ways that we do that, but primarily when we're talking about these specific classroom management practices, we're talking about increasing the frequency, the duration, the precision of those five critical features, and really ramping that up until we get to a place where the majority of the students in our group are being successful. If that works, then that's fantastic. We'll just continue to monitor and make sure kids are being successful. If that's not sufficient, then we're gonna go into more intensive, individualized behavioral support for kids with specific needs. That is not the content that we will cover in this course. In this course, we will take you through all of the, this process over here where we're talking about getting those initial features in place, making sure they're done with fidelity and making sure they're intensified to a place where the majority of kids are, are able to be success, successful. All right, in part one, we're gonna spend a little bit of time thinking about how, what, what do we mean by consequence strategies to increase behavior? Why would we use those? Why do we know about acknowledgments in general? And we'll spend a little bit of time talking about that. In parts two and three, we're gonna talk about the specific strategies that you're gonna use. So we'll start by defining specific praise, and then we'll talk about other strategies that you can layer on top of that to help provide students with a continuum of ways to acknowledge their appropriate behavior. And then in part four, we'll talk about how we adjust our use of reinforcement and how do we really think about the, the use of that as we, do, as we deliver instruction and how do we change that use of reinforcement across time to make sure students are able to be successful.